So Ileana is five. She just turned five actually two weeks ago. Yes, so 30th of November. She started to, she started to cry a lot at night. And I would try to comfort her. We changed beds. We did everything we could, and it just started to get worse. Her vision started to change. Her hearing was off. She would look at you like this. Put her chin to her chest and look up at you. And she. it was actually my sister that told us. She's an RN for 12 years. She, she was the one that was like, mm -hmm. I don't want to scare you, but I think she has a brain tumor. Yes. And that's the night that we took her to the ER, and I demanded that they did a CAT scan, and when the doctor walked into the room, she just gave me this look, and I just knew that it was something that wasn't going to be good. And that's when they told us she has a tumor the size of a tennis ball in her brain. When they quickly, like everything was so rush, 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 and they yeah. were just scaring us. They made it seem like she was going to flatline any minute in the ambulance. And then once we got the MRI, um, that's when they told us that she had DIPG, which they said it was a 0% survival rate. That anything that I saw online, anything that I saw, it wasn't true. She wasn't going to survive it. To go home and count my blessings because she was going to pass in 6 to 12 months. I felt beyond hopeless. I felt like it was my job to try to be, able to be the protector. and I feel like I got buckled to my knees and begging. And um, it was the worst feeling I can ever have to just not be able to be able to be able to do anything and not be able to change this diagnosis, not be able to take this pain away from whatever they were feeling. And it was the worst feeling ever. When one of my sisters said, hey, you should come to Innis Presence Church. They have Wednesday services. They do the healings there. You should bring her in. Jesus, devil, we bind you. Every plot that you had against this girl, we bind it right now. It is null and void. And we thank you that she'll live a long life. She'll live a long life and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. We just thank you that she'll live and not die. We bind every name, every bit of cancer, every tumor, every non-entity, every entity that's not supposed to be there. God, we thank you that it's bound right now in the name of Jesus. So, yeah, we would start bringing her every Wednesday. We would come in and you, Pastor Mel and Pastor Desiree would pray over her and I would feel God's presence. And I would see a difference once we left and we would go home. I would see her slowly getting better because the doctor would say she's going to get worse, get yes. prepared for that. And every week they would tell us it's going to get worse, but every week we would come to church and it would just get better and better. <laughs> because usually kids with this diagnosis, they can't walk. I don't know her. She just started doing the ballerina pose. And then we just kind of kept pushing it, pushing it. So when we saw the doctor, we're like, oh, look, you want to see something? Do the ballerina pose. And he's just like, Wait a minute, do that again? And no. she's just standing there no, like, they, they, it was truly They're amazing. always just like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, oh, it's amazing. She yeah. has no symptoms. It's a true miracle. We are so blessed. And I really do truly believe that anyone who seeks God, he can do these miracles, not just for my daughter, for anyone, if you truly believe it. She has nothing wrong with her. In the midst of our trial of Ileana's diagnosis, we were healed, our family was healed. Yes. Our lives completely changed for the best, and it's something that I'm so grateful for. It's brought our marriage united, our families more united, and it's just been more of a blessing than anything, having God's presence in our family.